All right, uh, I think we'll go ahead and get things started. Um, so thank you everybody again for joining us this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, in a second, I will pass it over to our, um, the people that you wanna really hear from, um, but just wanna give everyone a quick heads up that we will be holding questions until the end. Um, so once everyone has spoken, we'll let everyone um, raise your hands and then I will unmute you to, to ask your questions and um, we'll do that following the, the kind of formal, formal um, talk here. Um, so with that, I will pass it over to um, St. Louis City SC's CEO, Carolyn kindle -Betts. Well, good morning and thank you, Sam. Um, as you can imagine, last week was just an incredible week and um, I think we're still celebrating. But as promised, um, we have yet another major announcement for St. Louis City SC and that is we have hired our club sporting director, Lutz Vandensteel. He's coming directly from the Bundesliga with more than 30 years of international experience in professional soccer as a player, coach, and director. We are confident Lutz's experience and global lens make him a perfect fit to help us build a best in class sporting structure that will ensure this team further energizes the spirit of St. Louis. Lutz will play a major role in establishing the team's soccer operations, including creating the organizational structure on the sporting side, recruiting and hiring the best in class sporting staff, and building a diverse and inclusive youth team structure to recruit local, national, and international talent. St. Louis's soccer history runs deep, and we are so proud to have Lutz on board to help us build upon our city's rich foundation and move it forward into the future. So now I'd like to introduce Lutz Fan and Steel, who can give more details on his vision for building St. Louis City SC. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, first of all, I want to say that I'm really honored and excited to be here. Uh, I want to say thank you to Carolyn and the ownership group to give me this very special and amazing opportunity. Yesterday, after the news broke, I got lots of messages from mostly from Europe, of course, all of your friends over here, and they were asking me, why St. Louis, why the US, uh, why the MLS? And well, after I decided to leave uh, Fortuna Düsseldorf uh, in, uh, in March, uh, saying that I'm, I'm leaving by the end of the season, a few European clubs reached out to me and, and trust me, it was uh, quite a difficult decision to leave one of the, the biggest uh, European leagues and, and go somewhere else. But after I spoke to St. Louis, after Carolyn uh, and the ownership group told me about their vision, their goals, um, also, uh, about the ideas they have with the club, you know, uh, I somehow have to say it made it made click in my head, and that that was the place I really wanted to be. And yeah, I'm I'm definitely very very excited to to, to finally made it over into the states. Um, two things I want to emphasize a little bit uh, and go into uh, deeper details. Uh, first of all, um, well. I mean, for me, which really caught my eye was to, to, to it's a club where we starting on a completely blank piece of paper, we starting from scratch. So to really put in your own ideas, to put in, create the DNA of the club, uh, create their own playing philosophy, um, to build a stand up, stand out uh, academy, which I think uh, I will talk a bit after, uh, was the things which I really wanted to do. You know, I, I stayed, I was for eight years in Hoffenheim, which was, a bit of a similar situation than here. Uh, there was a lot of new things were built and it also was really, really exciting. So I have a really good feeling and I'm very confident that uh, we can build something special here. Uh, secondly, um, well, when Carolyn and the ownership told me about their vision and uh, one of the things which was for me very important was, she said, we want to work with the community and within the community. Uh, diversity and, and inclusion were words which really impressed me because I uh, did lots of my football also when I when I was for FIFA on the German FA in countries where yeah where it was not so easy just to to become a professional footballer and and that was something where I, I really can uh, yeah say that it, it caught my eye it, it, it made me very interested and uh, yeah, I want to go a little bit into that idea which, which we, we created together. I mean, uh, moving the, our MLS kickoff to 2023 gives us obviously a little bit more time to focus on the academy, to focus on talent development. 
St. Louis is very famous, uh, even in Europe, uh, when you talk about uh, about soccer in the States, uh, that high school football, university football, the region here is, is famous and very well known for, for having talents. So homegrown talent will play a big part in the club's philosophy. And our aim is to really find also a few unpolished gems, not just in St. Louis and the surrounding, also in the county, also in the state and also in the neighboring states. So we really want to have an excessive scouting process but we're going out there and trying to find the right players for us. Obviously, priority one will be St. Louis and the surrounding. We want to give kids from all neighborhoods the possibility to part, be part of, of St. Louis Tilly SC. Pay to play is something which uh, we, we don't want to go in, uh, you know, regardless where you come from, regardless who you are, you can show your skills, you can be part of it. And that is something which we really want to focus on. Well, it, it, it won't stop there because I think uh, we are a club which wants to work and want to be involved in the community. So we want to unite the area and we want to have, well, we all know that soccer connects people. And I think this is a very unique opportunity to put everybody together on the same page. Of course, furthermore, as I mentioned, we want to go out uh, in the whole state of Missouri into the bordering states, uh, scout talent, which also can be part of this, of this academy. Well, uh, another point I want to focus on is that uh, we're all aware that uh, not every young good footballer, not every young talented soccer player uh, will make it to be a professional. Uh, but there's one thing which we really want to put out there and, 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 and guarantee to the people. Our players will not just be trained uh, to, be, to be good soccer players, to be good athletes. I think our, our boys, they also should be, should be educated, they should grow into personalities personal development, values, behavior, a code of honor. It's often things which are talked about, uh, but they're not really followed. And I think this is what we really want to focus on and we want to be very different. Yeah, looking at my CV, it's a little bit long uh, as a player. So I, I, I played all over the world. And of course, we also want to have that, that global and international approach uh, on the long term when it comes to the MLS in 2023. But for now, it's uh, more building a foundation. The foundation must be the homegrown talents. The foundation must be the players here in St. Louis. That's what we want to focus on. And I think uh, everybody's excited. So let's go and start. So with that, we will go ahead um, and open it up for the q and I'll say yes, if everyone um, within the, the program can just raise their hand and I will call on people. Um, so first, we're actually going to uh, pass it over. We'll allow a um, quick fan question from uh, one of our great supporters with the Luligans, uh, Matt Baker. Hi, Lutz. Can you hear me? Hi, can you? Hi. Uh, so I enjoyed your comments about prioritizing a lot of the homegrown talent. Uh, you've said that very consistently. Places like Hoffenheim, Dusseldorf, you've got you've got a history of doing that. So it, coming coming to St. Louis and hearing that is is exciting. And one of the most exciting things as a supporter is to see a really talented player develop through an academy system and then be able to wear that St. Louis crest in the kit without needing to go elsewhere. You know, we've just seen a lot of a lot of high level talent go other places, Nashville, elsewhere within the MLS. And I'm really wondering if you can talk through how you envision the free to play academy system uh, looking. Will it, you know, some of the, some of the structures in that will it align with the new MLS youth league age groups? Um, how soon are you looking to spin up the academy itself and some of those teams? And then when do you actually anticipate our first development squad taking the field? Yeah, um, well, obviously right now it's very difficult to put a timeline uh, because of the COVID situation. It's, uh, you know, not easy to say we will have our first team on the pitch in that month or in that year, it, 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 it's not easy to answer. But definitely, as you mentioned it right, homegrown talent is that what we focus on. So uh, we want to make our talent base uh, as big as possible, but first things first, and we need to start here in St. Louis with the area, city and county, and, and obviously in a smaller circle to get the first uh, youth team onto the field. Um, our vision is that we're starting most likely with an under-15 team, under-16 team, uh, only with one team first, and then gradually add more teams to the academy uh, because we need to focus to really get straight away the top players. 
uh, our goal must be that when we kick off the season in 2023, that some of this first squad we will have in the MLS Academy will actually be in the squad of the MLS team when we kick off in 2023. That's a goal, that's a dream, that's a big aim, but I think this is what, what we have to aim for. And, um, you know, I believe uh, we can make some kids, uh, some local boys, a dream come true, actually to become professional footballers. But we have to get the starting really, really properly off the deck. And that means uh, a good scouting system to give everybody opportunity uh, to have a, a very good coaching education. And once we have all that in place, I think we will have a, a very decent first under 15, under 16 team on the field, which you can work very uh, continuously on it and then slowly introduce other age groups as well. That it will be probably when the MLS kicks off in 2023, we will have our full academy set up as well. Okay. Um, next, we will go to Tom Schwartz. Guten Tag, Lutz. Thomas Schwartz here. It's an SDL United Soccer Sunday. We're on KFNS 590, the fan. Uh, and very excited about, to have another German on board. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the history of St. Louis and soccer made in Germany. It was a TV program with Toby Charles that ran here for a number of years and was required viewing for almost every guy I knew. Uh, my question is about your book. And would I, if I read your book, would I understand more completely your vision for STL City? If you read my book, I think you find out a lot about uh, my history and a lot about uh, footballing cultures from all over the world. I think uh, if you want to find out more about the vision is about how we want to play football, then it will be more focused on, I will call it, uh, the way the academy system was built up, for example, in Leipzig or as well as, as in Hoffenheim. We want to play an attractive attacking minded football. We want to play a football which gets people into the stadium, you know, you know, especially in the development, it's not always about results. It's getting the first step right, it's getting the coaches right, it's getting to, to get a, a structure on the field that the vision must be we playing from our youngest age group up to the professional team. We want to play the same philosophy, the same DNA, and that should be like a modern pressing football, nothing crazy. Also, really like passing the ball around. So I'm I'm not really a, a big fan of any kind of long ball and pure pressing system. So in the end of the day, it will be a nice mix of a, of a few things. But if you watch the way Julian Nagelsmann plays football now in Leipzig, then this is uh, how my vision would be modern football should look like. Can, can I ask another question? Um, you spent quite a bit of time broadcasting, and I'm curious, what did you learn about the sport? while you were calling games on TV? It's a good question, actually, quite a lot, because you see the game on a, on a, on a, a complete different uh, angle. And I think uh, it, it was for me, uh, I actually used my broadcasting uh, when I did live games, especially at the World Cup, uh, as well as Champions League, but, but also most interesting in under 17 and the 20 youth World Cups, you get a different vision of the game because uh, you, you see you see so many things differently when you do it for a proper channel, when you have many different angles during the game. And uh, also to talk about the game, to actually get your mind going that quick, to read situations the right way. Uh, it, it helped me a lot to learn about the game because in the end of the day, you know, I was a goalkeeper. I always saw everything from behind, which you, you see a lot, but obviously not everything. And, and broadcasting gave me, gave me a different kind of, of look onto the field, a little bit of a different look, also the way you, you prepare for it. It uh, gives you lots of information and it helped me actually a lot to, to learn about the game. Well, I want to welcome you to Missouri. And if you ever get homesick for Germany, what I found in my trips to Germany, that a lot of Missouri reminds me very much of Germany. Get out of the city, take a drive and get out into the green hills and you'll feel at home. Thank you so much and welcome to St. Louis. Hey, Tom. All right, uh, we'll go next then to Stanislav Schlup. Shoot, sorry about that. Sorry, hi, Stanislav Schlup. Gold Germany and Spox, nice to meet you. Um, you mentioned a lot um, that there are some similarities between Abilai, Leipzig, Hoffenheim, and St. Louis. 
what would you consider the major difference between those clubs or let's say between your former clubs being Hoffenheim and Dusseldorf and the now the new project yeah the major difference is uh, that that we starting here literally uh, at zero, you know, uh, we're just about to, to, to build a stadium. We are now in the planning of uh, a training center and we're starting off as the first youth team. Even, for example, in Hoffenheim, uh, the club became professional at a certain stage. There was a, a little bit of setup was there. So I think it, it's a challenge, but it's also, uh, I would say, a beautiful challenge and an important challenge to, to get to get. I would call it an academy going, which uh, the foundation is right. And I think this was also done in the clubs you just mentioned. And I, I don't think we should we should copy clubs, but of course it's very important to get some influences. I mean, obviously I will not uh, uh, run that club on the sports side by myself. There will be a few more people uh, will come, uh, will, will, will help me, will, will support me. And they also will have their influences. And, and that's how we want to actually create our, our way of play. I think you also can't uh, compare the MLS uh, to the Bundesliga. It's a different football. Um, it's a, it's a, yeah, I would call it a, not as physical as the Bundesliga, maybe not as fast as the Bundesliga, but that's the way. If you watched uh, MLS is back and you looked at two, three teams, the way they played football, for example, uh, LAFC, then uh, I would say, well, the MLS goes in such a good direction. They, they start to play such competitive football. Looking three, four years ahead with the World Cup approaching also in the United States, I think the MLS will definitely grow. I personally will see that the MLS is outside Europe the most exciting league. And once the World Cup approaches, I believe the MLS will be able to have similar uh, levels as some of the European leagues, obviously not as the top four, but everything below is a realistic aim also where you can settle the United States. Okay, thanks. Patrick Scherer. Yes, okay. Hi, Lutz. Uh, Patrick Scherer from Germany calling from Düsseldorf, actually, Rheinische Post newspaper. Um, first of all, congratulations to your new job. And um, perhaps you, you could tell one more time um, what, uh, what was the, the main factor for you going to the US and not to the Premier League or Serie A or uh, even to Bundesliga? Or haven't there been any offers from the Bundesliga? Well, I was in touch with a, a few Bundesliga clubs, but there was nothing really, really concrete because I think I decided uh, quite earlier that I want to go abroad again. And uh, I, I mentioned it, I think even in, in, in your newspaper, I mentioned it that, that uh, I want to go abroad. Um, of course, um, when you talk and when you, when you, get, when you get interest uh, from, from, from the Premier League and, and from Italy, then it, it's always something special. And, 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 and yeah, I mean, uh, it, it makes you happy. But for me, uh, yeah, it was it was different things which uh, really caught my eye. I mean, uh, I believe the, the, the ownership's vision is just perfect to build something really special. You know, I mean, uh, to have also now a little bit of time to create an academy, something uh, where, where I was involved in, 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 in Hoffenheim as well, and then up into the professional team, I think to, to, get, to get all these ideas you had, all the things you learned in the last 25 years, uh, to put that on a piece of paper and actually actually try to put that into, into a new club. I think uh, this is something really unique for me. It was one of the most exciting projects uh, at the moment in, in the footballing world. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I really fell in love with the project. I wanted to do it. And for me, it was clear uh, I will come over here uh, once I spoke to the ownership and they gave me their vision. Yeah, as I said before, that was the moment when I said, that's it. I, I will make that step, go away from one of the biggest leagues, but go to a project where I really feel comfortable and confident we can really achieve great things. So one more question I have to ask. Um, uh, so will we never see you again in Bundesliga or is that you, you can't say that? Well, I committed myself on a on a on a on a long term uh, deal here in St. Louis. So uh, you know, I mean, if you if you build something from scratch, it takes some time, and um, I believe we also need to have a certain patience. Uh, to to you won't you won't be able to to see the big results within six months or twelve months. It all takes time, and obviously, uh, as uh, in a way, I, I see myself as the sports architect of, of, of the club uh, when it comes to the way of playing and when it comes to the to the style of play and to the yeah to the dna 
So um, I, I see myself here for, uh, for quite a long time, of course, and uh, what's happening after, Patrick, you know, you never know, football is a very short-lived business, but right now my focus is completely on St. Louis, and I'm also, I'm not really one second, I was uh, not sure if I should do it or if an English club would be better. I'm 100% here with my mind, with my heart, and I'm just ready to rumble. Okay, thank you very much, and good luck. Next, we'll go to Jürgen Kawa. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, I'm the US sports correspondent for Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, a newspaper in Germany. And I've been following uh, US sports for many years. Um, one of the uh, most uh, uh, hard to understand observations is that um, American soccer has a huge foundation in terms of its uh, uh, the, the participation rate of young players. But when it comes to leading those young players to top-notch uh, world-class performances, the system doesn't seem to provide. So I guess that um, this is a good time for a uh, person like uh, Lutz van den Stiel to uh, step in and help to bring it up. So first question is, um, does Mr. van den Stiel have any uh, explanation for why this isn't working yet? And number two, does the performance of some of the younger players, um, mentioning Tyler Adams, for instance, in Leipzig right now, um, does it show that something has been beginning to change or is this just a, you know, a blip uh, moment uh, which cannot be read uh, or interpreted? No, uh, thanks for the question. I think uh, uh, your way of looking at things are, are correct. I think this last transition from actually uh, becoming a young professional uh, was a little bit missing. Uh, if you're looking at the athletic education here in the States, then uh, I think uh, America is far ahead from Europe, you know, I mean, th when it comes to the pure athletic, but to bring that onto the field uh, sometimes is, uh, is, is not that, that, that visible. And I believe that that one year, that transition time from getting out from the high school, uh, becoming a young professional, that was always the major problem. So now with the new development system, the MLS put in actually to have this nationwide youth league starting, which will obviously also take some time, but I think this is clearly the right step. Uh, looking, uh, if I go back into Germany, I think uh, you, you know that very well, the introduction of the youth Bundesliga or the youth Regionalliga uh, before it was not there and the level was much weaker. Once you get a more compact way of uh, performance structure, I think just really worked out perfectly. And yes, the United States are such a big country, so you need to work with the conferences. But the way the MLS planned it now is really a very good idea. I think this is the, the right step in the future. And uh, yeah, we just, I think, have to work on that transition from being a, a youngster, being a youth team player, to get into that first professional step. Uh, second question, uh, yeah, I'm with you. I, I don't believe that it's a coincidence. I mean, you mentioned uh, Tara Adams, but uh, also looking at uh, Wes McKenney or, or looking at Joe Sargent, uh, who comes from St. Louis, looking at Zach Steffen, who I had in Dusseldorf. I mean, that's really players who, who have, a, well, not just a talent, they are, they are really, I would say, good Bundesliga players. Looking at the interest uh, McKenney had from, from other clubs in England as well, then it shows that, that he is a big foot huger. Uh, Tyler Adams, well, you know, uh, with that game against, against Atletico playing tonight again, I think he's now in the books. Uh, everybody in Europe knows him and, and takes, takes note of young American players. Um, and I think there is many more out there. It's just uh, the question is lots of these boys going very early to Europe, sometimes even too early. And uh, um, they're going too late. What also happens, then many US players didn't make the cut anymore. So I think you just really have to find the right timing. But uh, there is no doubt, I think, that the US and the MLS will produce in future also more players which will go to Germany and to other big European leagues. I think the style of play, the, the playing culture between the US and Germany really goes very well together. And I hope that we also can produce some players which uh, not just will play their whole life in the MLS, but we actually can transfer them to Europe and make the dream they have even bigger. May I add another question? Okay. Um, I think um, it's a little early for something like this, but um, if you're successful, you might actually end up um, having the, the trouble to keep uh, players. 
um, if they are too good. Um, so um, do you already kind of uh, look ahead that far and say, okay, um, if I develop great talent, um, how can I keep it in St. Louis and so make the team and the club um, more successful and better? Or is that something you don't even think about right now? Oh, it's something, of course, we have also in our mind, but I believe there is nothing wrong. I mean, if we if we develop players who, who, who create interest in, in Europe and in the biggest leagues, then, then this is something it just shows we would do great work. So, I mean, I would be upset if, uh, if, if, uh, if one of our top players would go to, to Austria or to Switzerland or one of the average European leagues, but if he would get transferred to one of the top four, that is something what we have to deal with, something we have to live with. And I mean, if the MLS keeps on developing like, like it is and it goes really steep up, then uh, I think the chances to keep that players is, is possible. On the other hand, I think there is always the way uh, players returning back home. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm 100% sure that uh, McKenney or also uh, Josh, they will uh, actually finish their career uh, once they reach a certain age, they will finish their career over here in the MLS. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, there is always uh, two sides to the medal, but if we can develop talent to also can get transferred to Europe, then it just would show that we're doing a fantastic job. Thank you very much. All right. Um, thank you. We'll have one time for one last question, so we'll go to Alex Austin. Hi, Lutz. Can you hear me? You. Hi, from Lower Bavaria, from your home county. Uh, congrats uh, to your new job. And I have uh, two questions. We've met, uh, I think, one month ago. And uh, at that time, you had uh, various options. And uh, can you just describe what happened from that time to your final decision? And the second question, how did uh, COVID-19 affect your travel to the US? Yeah, let's start with the, with the COVID question. Yeah, it was... Um obviously uh, quite complicated uh, to travel because uh, you know the, the the embassies are are, are not fully working the flights are not fully working but uh, st louis city sc they managed to to get me an exception via the mls to be able to travel over here so that's how i came obviously i was wearing a mask like you're supposed to do and uh, the plane was very empty so there's not many passengers right now from germany flying into the united states uh, secondly, yeah, when, when we spoke, um, there was options on the table, but uh, I mean, that was already uh, when I also had my mind wrapped around, around St. Louis. And um, of course, you need to, need to look at, at all the disadvantages and advantages. As I mentioned before, for me, I believe uh, this is the best thing. I want to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 47 now, I think, <laughs> yeah, 47. And um, um, I still consider myself as a, as a, as a younger sporting director. Um, or at least not an old one. And uh, I, I, I'm a bit like, you know, I wanted to do something, um, not go to a club where there is lots of structures. Um, meaning uh, I probably would have not joined any other MLS club at this moment in time. Uh, St. Louis City has there uh, for me uh, the most unique setup you can find. This is where you, I, I, I would call it live your own dream. By, by put all your experiences, all the knowledge in, uh, develop a system together with the ownership to, to, to make something which wasn't here. And you have to consider that uh, soccer here, uh, you know, people in Europe who think about St. Louis, they think about hockey and they think about baseball, but the, the, well, it's so enthusiastic here. Uh, soccer, people just absolutely love it. Um, you know, it, it's a real soccer culture. Uh, the SC in our crest not just stands for soccer club, but also for soccer capital, because the history of St. Louis soccer is amazing. And all these things together told me, Mr. Fennenstiel, that is where you go. Perfect. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Um, sorry, I know some other people have a few questions. I would say... If anyone has any questions or any, anyone is looking for any media requests um, for Lutz or for Carolyn, um, feel free to reach out to myself. Uh, my email is sam at stlcitysc.com. So thank you all again for joining us this morning and we'll talk to you soon.